all afternoon. So that is good news. Now, if I sound like I'm straining slightly, well, that is because I am straining slightly. I'm trying to move this beastly chair out of the way. So, bear with me. There we go. Shadow nearly administer some discipline re just now. Little cub tried to pull the tail. Oh, goodness, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? That is spectacular. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Just too playful. Too desperate for mum to play with her. Kaylee, you want to know if I've ever seen a mother leopard reject her cubs? Kaylee, I haven't ever seen a mother reject her cubs. Um, I think it's very unusual for that to happen, if not almost impossible. The only reason that it would happen, Kaylee, is if the mother was for some reason unable to keep hunting. So perhaps it was a terrible drought or uh, she just couldn't hunt, she was injured or something like that. Then she might leave the cubs to fend for themselves and most of the time, okay, of course, if they were this age then they would die almost immediately. I think Shadow is quite enjoying this little game. And so, Kaylee, uh, you know, all things being equal, unless there was some kind of um, uh, issue with food, mothers will normally not reject their cubs when they're young. But of course, in Shadow's case, re cub rejection is certainly a possibility for why she has not been very successful as a mother. Now, what happens is, of course, when they get ready to give birth again, when they are, um, what was I going to say there? Was that little thing jumped? When they are coming into estrus again, so when they ovulate again, or the time just before ovulation happens, then they don't really want to be around the cubs. And so I suppose you might refer to that as a rejection. And yes, I suppose it is a rejection of sorts. Um, but I, you know, not at birth. I've never seen a cub rejected at birth. This is fantastic. It really is very, very special. This cub is a magnificent play player. Enjoys a good game. <laughs> and Shadow every so often just makes a little sort of perfunctory grab with the front paw. Constantly very aware where the little one is. This is fantastic. Charging out. Poor mum, so long suffering. And so gentle. I mean the power in that cat is is phenomenal. The power and strength and ability to cause severe grievous physical trauma to just about anything out here is completely calmed down when looking after the little cub. Powerful jaws, rapier teeth, and, you know, curved, vicious claws, all of it put away and somehow dulled down and used in the most gentle fashion when playing with a little cub. And I suppose it is a little bit like us humans, you know, we... Kids, when they play fight, are not sort of trying to hurt each other and you can get quite physical about it and somehow all mammals have that kind of instinct 
You've all seen it with your dogs. If you try and play with a puppy, it doesn't, or certainly a slightly older puppy, it, it understands what is sore and what isn't, what's going to hurt you and what isn't, and it doesn't want to end the game by hurting you. And so they're careful not to hurt often. Some are not so much, in which case you end up with a hole in your arm or leg. But you get the drift of what I'm saying. Cats, that's a nice one. Uh, I don't think there is an official biological age who says, what age is a cub no longer called a cub? Well, cat, um, or do we call Hosanna and Shongila cubs? Uh, I might still. Others might call them sub-adults. I think, you know, for me, they're pretty much cubs until they leave home, until they leave their parents. So Shongila and Hosanna have been forced into independence now. And so I suppose I might not call them cubs. In fact, on the radio, I don't. I don't say male leopard cub. I say young male leopard now and young female leopard. So I guess, yeah, once they go independent, it would, they, they certainly couldn't really be conceivably called cubs anymore. But I don't think that there's an official time at which they're not cubs anymore. This is definitely a cub. Oh, this is just, this is too fantastic. And it is the best Easter Sunday treat, isn't it? There's some Impala rutting away to the other side there. That will interest Shadow. And it'll interest her because, obviously, if she wants to eat, a male impala that is concentrating on sex and not looking after himself is going to be much easier to kill. And so she's quite near there. You see, she's picked it up. Yes, now she's saying, did you see that? She's saying to the cub, sit still, shut up. I'm listening. She's also hissing at us, which isn't very nice. Sit still, Ferg. Not sure why she did that. We haven't moved at all. So I'm just going to be very quiet. But that's what it is. That's why she suddenly perked up. She's trying to hear where those impala are. You can see the cub is not playing anymore. The cub's gone off into the bushes. So that hiss was sufficient to move it away. There she's chuffing it again. She's chuffing the cub. <laughs> 